All right, like, like John said, my name is Ratul Mahajan. I used to be at Microsoft Research, kind of mostly academic or scientist by profession, uh, and doing a company for the first time. The company is called Intentionet, and our goal here is to help you design and evolve your network like software. So we had a cloud tech conference. I don't need to tell you, I think cloud is essentially enabled by the network. If network did not exist, there would be no cloud. But you would stop trusting the cloud if it actually gave you an inside the behind the scenes look at how networks today get designed and things. To give you some idea today how network engineering happens, so a network engineer typically has some policy intent, how traffic should and should not flow. They are responsible for translating that policy intent into device configurations on your virtual routers, your physical routers, your AWS VPCs, Azure VNets, what you have. Then maybe if it's a big shop with more than two or three engineers, somebody would manually look at it, hey, this looks OK. If it's not, you go check it. If it looks OK, you go deploy it. And then you basically cross your fingers. The reason you cross your fingers is that this task today is very, very complex. Because translating policy into configuration, actually, you have many policy concerns, many protocols, many vendors, low-level directives. It's almost like today, these networks are being hand-designed and encoded using assembly. So that's what we are about to change. But this is what happens today. You, know, you have network complexity, and even the largest of cloud players, as a result, have trouble keeping the networks uh, up. It results in security breaches. And at the same time, I think this does not make much news, but this is basically the bane. Why people who do compute and server or data management hate the network. Network is the longest pole. It is the slowest piece today. In fact, one of our customers, we learned, it takes them a few weeks to make even small changes to the network. And the reason it's happening, it's very hand designed, it's very manual, uh, so it's forth. But there are trends afoot that actually will make it even worse, which is disaggregation is coming for hardware and software. So configuration will get more complex. Uh, we are doing automation a lot. And automation, it seems like a blessing, but it's not a total blessing. Because you know, without automation, you kill one router. With automation, you kill all 100. So keep that in mind. So things are getting more complex as well. Uh, there's a transition to more complex network architectures. So you build data centers, and now you're building essentially hybrid cloud architectures. So complexity goes up. At the same time, the scale goes up. So you know, engineers today are managing 10 to 100 devices. Tomorrow, they'll manage 100 to 1,000 devices. So one way to look at what's happening is that the complexity of the network is going up significantly over time. But what's really happened in the technical space is that our ability to handle that complexity is not keeping pace. So all the outages and breaches that I was talking about, it basically reside in this gap. So you know, this, if the picture looks grim, uh, you should not be very uh, pessimistic like I was. Uh, essentially, I think we faced this sort of gap before. And we faced these gaps in hardware engineering before the EDA, or electronic design automation companies took off. There was a huge gap in the complexity of what people wanted to design and what the ability to design was. And then this whole industry took off around EDA. Similarly with software, as software has gotten more complex, we as an industry, as a research community, as well as practitioners have invented a set of things to help us essentially increase the level of complexity that software can build. So we as a company, I think we are basically looking to transform network engineering by introducing a similar cutting edge hardware and software engineering practices uh, to the domain. So if we succeed, we would be something like you know, cadence or synapses of networking. People will be using very formal tools and very formalized processes to design the network and not the way things get done today. So by that, I mean you should be able to do continuous integration of your network. Every check before it gets pushed out to the network should get checked. You should be write, able to write unit tests on your network, which you have no ability to write today. There are formal models of networks that we've built and are building upon which essentially lets you say exactly how packets will flow in the network without actually pushing code out. So if you think about, like, basically the problem with the network is that rollback or flighting sometimes is not an option. So you actually want assurance be before you push code out. So a lot of the formal modeling is we enable high level uh, specification as well in there. So give you some idea of what we're building and make it more concrete, essentially, you know, our analysis engine that we build, it'll take all of your network configuration and state. So network's not an island. So by state, I mean like what the information that's coming from the outside to the network. We let engineers then define what the network should look like. And we have models underneath that give you guarantees where violations happen, where they don't happen, and give you what the bad lines are. So we are building essentially a platform as an example technology we're building, uh, continuous integration for the network. So the, the same operator I showed earlier will design, hey, this is what I want to do. You define your correctness criteria. These are formal rules of intent. 
analysis engine says, well, you do not meet your criteria, go revise. If you do, uh, go deploy. And that's one of the things we're after. But anyway, I'll stop here. Thank you.